and get in from out of the 120 degree heat that is expected today. So, uh, so uh, welcome everybody. I'm looking around to see if there's somebody who hasn't been here before. I do see a few, a couple. And so I want to explain that we are a Messianic congregation. The term Messianic, of course, comes from the word Messiah. The word Messiah comes from the Hebrew word Mashiach. The word Mashiach means anointed one. So the word Mashiach got translated okay, uh, into Greek as Christos, which got translated into English as Christ. But to Jewish people, the term Christ has a, a hard sound to it, and it has many connotations that are not favorable. So that's why we call, that's why we refer uh, to Yeshua, Jesus, as, as the Messiah, rather than would say the Christ. It means exactly the same thing. But even to this day, after all of these years, the term Christ is a bone in the throat to Jewish people. So that's why... Uh, we we, we uh, use the term. Now we have a few other terms, but basically we are a group that fuses together, fuses together ancient Judaism and ancient Christianity. Well, most people think that those are two mutually exclusive things. But for those of us who are thinking it through for ourselves, we're saying, well, wait a minute. Any criteria that we use for the validity of the New Testament now, as we apply the same criteria, we see that the, both the Old and New Testament was written by the same author. And although there were scores of men that wrote it over a period of over uh, a, a thousand years, 1,500 years and longer, it all has the same consistent philosophy. It's all one book. Now, you would think that a mistake like that would have been corrected long ago because there are so many theologians in the Jewish community and in the Christian community. You would think that for all the schooling and, and the scholarship that somebody would have put that together and said that this is all one book, it's all one faith, and that all of the other ethnicity and social things are sideshow. You would think in, in, in thousands of years that that would have been discovered but it wasn't God's time. You see, the Jewish people had to form and congeal, and similarly, the Gentile the nations, that's what Gentile means, nations, had to congeal and form also. Now, the downside of that was the separation of the groups, but God is not satisfied to leave that as is. It is his intention. When it says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, you think we're gonna have two different rooms to do that in? Huh? No, it's all going to be together. One faith. Abraham started a physical race, but he also started the faith race. And belonging to the faith race does not have to do with ethnicity. It does not, it does not have to do with anything other than faith. That's why, that's why we're calling it the faith race. So you say, well, in the fullness of time, when each group felt sufficiently secure... At some point, some people who were wanting to overthrow the establishment, both in traditional Christianity and in traditional Judaism, we rebels said, nonsense, let's, get, let's look at this. I'm going to decide this for myself. See, we live in this age of rebellion. And so what happened was, was we, we were in rebellion against, against what other people have been telling us, that you have to do this and you have to do that. And... And there are some people who say, oh, yeah? Says you. <laughs> so about 50 years ago, part of the Jesus, the Jesus Revolution came. Some people, there were a lot of Jew, Jewish young people in that movement who said, I don't really see why believing in a Jewish Messiah who spoke a Jewish language, who lived in a Jewish country, prophesied by Jewish prophets. I don't really see how that makes me a Gentile. I don't really see why, the, why he was not the founder of essentially a Jewish faith that other people came into. 
And so, and so nobody really stopped to realize what that would mean, that there would have to be community organizers <laughs> and, uh, and, con and congregations and outreaches and people who were willing to put it on the line and stand in the streets and go all out for the Messiah. But it spread. Others wanted to join the revolution and say, I want in on this. You see, there was something big that went on. It was, it was by a small group of people, small group of Semites associated with Abram, and then a small, a larger group that were associated with Moses. But these were turning points. These were turning points. And there came, 2,000 years ago, there was a plumb line dropped, and you were on one side or another. But that was a turning point, a time of revolution. My friends, we are part of a turning point and part of a revolution. And we are the early ones. Well, you say, Paul, there's 100,000 of us. Yeah, that's a small number. huh? But if you were to go back 50 years, you might have had 1,000. We're gaining on it. But it's gaining, but it's increasing in its velocity. And there's nothing wrong with being the early money in. You want to get in on a growth stock, we're it. It may be a penny stock now, okay? But I'm in early, and I'm thinking it's going to be big. It's going to be bigger, because God is not going to leave this mistake. He's going to have all people fused together towards the common cause of restoring Israel both on a physical and spiritual level. And we are willing to work together to put aside our ethnicity, our social uh, uh, adherence to different groups. We're willing to put everything else aside. We have differences in nuances of theology, and we put it all aside. And we say, no, let's stay with the main game. The main game is, is to play a part in the biblical saga. And so for our small role, it may seem small to us. We, we are the little people, but it takes a lot of little people. And God does it because then God gets all the glory. All the glory. And we're part of that. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, we're uh, going to have a holy convocation. Does that sound exciting? <clears throat> we thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Thank you that it says in John, 1 John, that God is love. And if one reads the Quran, there's not one call to love anything or anybody. They asked Yeshua, What's the greatest commandment? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and body, and strength. And what's the second one? Love your neighbor. So God is love. Is God still performing miracles? Yes. Five nations came against his people, Jerusalem. In, his, in Jerusalem, 67, when I was bar mitzvahed. Five nations greater than his feeble little Jewish people. And how did they all get vaporized? How did they uh, shrink back? How did, how did the Jews recapture Jerusalem? Isn't that a miracle? Kind of. We just pray that uh, Yeshua, when Larry read uh, John 8, Yeshua was fulfilling a, an old scripture, Old Testament scripture that says, those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they've departed from the fountain of living waters. And now it's time, why don't we sing his praises? Amen.